Ahoy! What's up? Um, I am in Los Angeles at Sarah's house. Lean in, Sarah. Hi. Um, we just had pizza delivered, but I'm going to wait a minute till I die. When I'm dying of hunger, then I'll eat. Um, in Los Angeles, wanted to say what's up, have a little virtual hangout, talk about some things, and uh, catch up for the new year. Um, checking Sarah's little feed there. I think that's an ad. You can click it. <clears throat> so, um, in Los Angeles for another week or so here, taking care of some business, um, and then back to Honolulu, and um, yeah, so let's see, what should I talk about first? Um, my little brother Colby Thorpe and Scott Tillery are in the chat over there. They're going to keep everyone in line in case anyone acts silly like last time. And, um, yeah, I think we're good to go. Uh, first thing I'll talk about is maybe we'll talk about the rudder situation. Um, uh, someone just asked if I went swimming at Pele's chair. <clears throat> no, but I did just see Pele's chair. The other day I hiked out to the lighthouse uh, with um, Kimberly Wood. And we saw Pele. She pointed out Pele's chair, but it was too too far down for me. Um, what up, Mark Kildragger? Um, so let's talk about the rudder for a second. And um, it'll be hard for me to keep track of the chat um, while I'm talking about this. But uh, I'll do my best. Um, so the latest on the rudder scenario, it's a kind of never-ending, unfolding saga. Um, I dove on it, I don't know, maybe five or six times. <clears throat> I finally got the broken sort of tiller shaft to come down. And much to my dismay, which I was afraid was going to be the case, I would actually have to remove the engine and slide the prop shaft in if I was trying to do this in the water, or even if I was trying to do it out of the water. Um, and that's just absurd. Um, so... Now what I'm I'm going to do is I'm planning on hauling out in February. I think I'm just going to keep the same um, tiller shaft, and I'm actually going to use my original rudder. <clears throat> and I'm going to have bronze tabs welded on the tiller shaft while it's out of the water. Um, I've seen some other repairs done this way, and they look super, super bulldog and sound. So that's kind of the direction I'm going um, at the moment. The, once I got the rudder off and like let it dry out and take a, took a close look at it, the thing is really solid and sound. And I'm actually going to be able to have one of the long rods um, remade and uh, I'll be able to reinstall it um, like uh, to factory. Uh, there's like a hole in the tiller shaft. So I'll be able to do that once I get out on the hard. So that's the plan. I'm going to reinstall the rudder and... Um, get it all tightened up and um, then I'll be hauling out there in Honolulu and uh, moving forward with that project. Um, so yeah, what's happening in the chat over here? Just people from all over. Norway. Everybody, everybody's from all over. Thanks. Especially <laughs> Wisconsin. All you cats. Oh, Saudi Arabia, man, <laughs> especially all you cats in places where it's late at night. I apologize. Uh, the whole round earth thing, you know, that's going <laughs> to stir up all the flat earthers are going to have a hissy fit. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, even when it's uh, very laid out. Um, it's dark here, but it's only six o'clock here in Los Angeles. Um, it's a question about your license, your master's license. Did you sail with the Merchant Marines? Uh, no, I did not sail with the Merchant Marines. Um, I have a master's license so that I can, when I do, I can do larger yacht deliveries. That's the whole reason I got my captain's license. Um, so I can do much, much higher paying yacht deliveries where I can be covered by major insurance. Thailand and Uruguay. Yeah, it's cool, That's right? That's amazing. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah. Oh, thank you, Jason. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, uh, what else? Um, let me think. I don't know. Uh, hope, maybe you guys saw my new book came out. 
which I'm happy about. It, it came out beautifully. Um, very happy with it. And um, yeah, it's, it's nice to see everything organized in the way it's organized. Um, me and Sarah had breakfast with Captain David Stovall yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to see him and catch up. That's the first time I've seen him since I left. He was one of the last people to see me before I pushed off um, for Hawaii. Um, so it was good to catch up with Stovall. Um, what else? What's happening here? Someone asked if you sailed back to LA. No, I did not <laughs> sail back to LA. I flew and it took, it was a five hour flight. Um, thank you, Stanky the cat. Appreciate it. Um, and yes, I'm going to be, I'm going to be exploring, uh, the outer Hawaiian islands. Um, are you mean like the French frigate shoals, the Northwest Hawaiian islands? I don't believe I'll be going up that way just because it's the opposite direction of where I'm planning on going. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to hit all of the Hawaiian islands before I leave. I'll be leaving. I plan on leaving Hawaii at the end of April, beginning of May, um, and sailing to the upper line islands will kind of be my first Polynesian landfall outside of Hawaii. And, um, then so much of like my, my summer cruising plans depends on what is open. So no hard plans. I have about three or four different versions of like what could take place. But um, Kiribati just announced that they are opening um, under certain restrictions. But I believe a lot of that will relax by the time that the time comes. Um, so, yeah, like I might sail to Fanning Island and then Christmas Island in Kiribati. And then if I can get um, clearance to go to it, then I'm, I'm interested in sailing to the Phoenix Islands, and that's all like a big marine protection area. Um, if I can't get clearance to go there, then I might sail to French Polynesia, to the Tuamotus, and then to the societies. But <clears throat> there's so much, so many bad accounts of what it's like to be a cruiser in French Polynesia currently. Um, so that has me kind of like not sure. Um, and again, like I said, all of it's up in the air because so many countries are still closed at this moment, other than Kiribati. So we'll see what the spring brings. Um, worst comes to worst, I could always just sell to, you know, Guam or American Samoa and then head on down. Um, in the sort of like dream scenario, I plan on hopefully being in New Zealand this time next year. Um, but I'll get to New Zealand around in, in November when cyclone season happens and i've already started looking into applying for my new zealand um uh visa for it would be a nine month visa um thank you randy appreciate it all the stuff going to the haul out um all the donations over there so i appreciate it um so maybe i'll see what's happening over here in the uh, chat someone asked where the book is available amazon um mark. yeah the you can actually buy it from my site um uh scott or colby will you guys pay, post the link in the chat uh for the book um and uh yeah so I, I i don't know if it's on amazon yet it will be eventually on amazon's everywhere but um the quickest way to get it would be through my site um uh Oh, someone's asking who's that in the background. Sarah, lean in. That's Sarah. <laughs> you guys probably saw her come. She did some adventures in Hawaii with me. I'm at Sarah's house here in Los Angeles. Um, someone said, what's my dream sailboat? It's a 1965 Alberg 30, all <laughs> custom, with a broken rudder. That's my dream sailboat. Um, hello, first, last. So what else can we uh, – what do you guys want to talk about? Um, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, I'm excited about this year coming up. Um, it says, when you're heading back to Hawaii, you can take my boat from San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going the easy route. I'm going that five-hour flight route when I'm heading back to Hawaii. Um Thank you, Truman. Appreciate it. Um, 
Robert Carter says, I've inspired him to get a boat. I'm, I am, that's awesome. And I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to say both right now so that you don't curse me later on after you buy one and you're like, this is awesome and terrible. Um, Where's somewhere you've never been and would like to go? Um, everywhere in the world. <laughs> that's right. Um, right now, I've just been studying everything in the South Pacific. So I'm very excited to go to uninhabited atolls and um super stoked at that possibility um so colby thorpe just posted the link to the book in the chat for whoever was asking um someone says how much do you budget spending per year to maintain the cruising lifestyle um everything that i have basically uh, i don't really i live like paycheck to paycheck so it's not yeah i mean I live on the very fine line of absolute destruction. So I'm not the best person to inquire about cruising budgets. Um, uh, what else? Mike's asking if I've been to any other skate spots in Hawaii. You know what? Uh, I fell so hard on that video with uh, Big Island Mike that I have not been skating since then. I couldn't, I could barely walk for like, a month my hip was so jacked but i was actually just thinking today that i want to hit some small skate parks when i get back um but i probably need to re-up my my health insurance before i do that um what else um what's the plans for self-steering uh currently i'm just gonna rebuild the sail mat unless something else comes up um, if I could manage to get a hydro vein, then that would be awesome, but it, I do not have a budget for it. So if I found one use that I could afford, then I would definitely go that route. Like hydro veins, the only way to go. But as far as it goes, I don't have a budget for anything other than the haul out and repair. Thank you, Randy. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to rebuild that sail mat and, um, keep on keeping on. It's like, you know, it's like I can... I can make it work and squeak along. If you think about like um, Sir Rob Knox Johnson, like his broke on his around the world trip very early on. So <clears throat> is it ideal? No, but I believe I can keep kind of like piecing it together and just repairing it as I go um, and just hope for the best, you know. Um, what else? What's the craziest adventure you've experienced? Um, I think the... Uh, holding the tiller in my hand and all the steering going while the boat turned up into the wind was probably the craziest thing I've ever, ever moment sailing where I'm like, yeah, that's not good. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? Why no electric motor in the future? Uh, I just have zero interest in electric motors. Uh, the main, one of the main reasons is like, I plan on going to very extreme, out of the way, wild places. And I know everybody's going to be like, but Sailing Uma. Also, on the Sailing Uma videos, they've had to plug in every night at, at marinas. So, um, for me, I know that I can, like, be in some little anchorage in Chile and find someone's uncle or grandpa that can fix a diesel engine <laughs> to come on my boat and fix my diesel engine. And um, so, yeah, I'm not interested in electric auxiliary whatsoever. I'm all diesel all the way. Um, uh, someone asked if I listen to audiobooks past the time. I listen to a lot of audiobooks, but usually when I'm underway, I don't listen to anything. I have very little music sometimes, but mostly I just read. I listen to the C and think, or I write um, or edit videos. Um, someone said, Where am I now? I'm in Los Angeles, California for about a week. Um, Someone said, I'm not a fan of surfing because of waiting around, yet sailing can also be dull sometimes. I've never bored sailing. Never. I've never been once bored sailing. Ever. It's like surfing. It's like sitting on a shortboard is like trying to sit on a beach ball. And um, it looks awesome, but it's, uh, yeah, I just don't. I like snowboarding because I can just go down the mountain whenever I want. But, yeah, I've never once been bored sailing. Um. Uh, someone asked what kind of knot I tied in the hook when I lost the tuna. I have no idea because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> one was in the book, I did it 
and um from now on i'll get those crimps um but yeah i'm like new to all of that so it was full on just me having no idea what i was doing which is the whole reason i didn't put out any more lures and lose them because i was like well i don't know what i'm doing i might need these to like save my life later for food if something worse happens than the rudder so um what else um, yeah, Tritea is safely at the Alawai, and I got people staying on it, watching it for me. Um, what else? What else? I wonder, is Tim here? Six, are you here? Last time I didn't realize Tim was on there. Um, I don't see him on here yet. I haven't seen him. Do I get scared out of sea? No, um, much to my misfortune i don't really get scared of anything um which will probably be my death at some point but um yeah unfortunately i don't really get scared of things other than scorpions i don't like scorpions neither does scott or colby my brothers who are on the chat right now um what kind of food do i eat at sea um a lot like i got really into like Fresh rice and Japanese curry, really like that. Um, beans and rice, um, ramen. Usually it's like easy things. <laughs> you try to make things that are, anyone that's seen the passage video saw kind of how gnarly it is to try to cook at sea. And um, yeah, you try to make things that are easy to prepare. Um, and also like if you get fresh food, you kind of have to knock through that pretty quick. Is it costly living on a sailboat? It's not at all. Not, you know, once a refit's done on a sailboat, um, you know, I think my moorage fees when I actually am at the dock right now in Hawaii and not under anchor is like just over 500 bucks a month. So, and I don't have any other expenses. I don't have any debt or anything. So it's pretty, I have a pretty minimal lifestyle. <clears throat> Someone was saying that the story about you almost drowning. That's yeah, scary. that, yeah, that, that whole thing was, uh, was scary. <laughs> um, I don't know that I was scared at the moment. I mean, I thought I was going to drown, but I don't know that I was scared. I was more concerned. Um, but yeah, that was like, it gave me a different respect and outlook on dinghies it's very easy to find yourself in a bad way in a dinghy. And like, it's an, that's something that we always take for granted. I think all of us as, as boaters. Um, have, uh, yeah. Someone asked about a near drown story. Yeah, I have two of those actually. And they're both on my YouTube channel. Um, what else? How many pounds of food do you have to survive 32 days at sea? It seems like you wouldn't have room, have room in my mind. Yeah, I have plenty of room. Um, I had, I provisioned for probably 45 days. I was eating food for weeks after I got to Alawai that was from Los Angeles. Um, Kate just said that her students love the scene of the cooking. Yeah, super funny. Um, what else? Someone said five systems on the boat that one has to be ready to fix like at all times. Uh, thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. Um, five systems. Oh, your mental health. Um, <laughs> the sales is the main sort of thing. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Usually when you're sailing, there's only one system you're concerned with. Well, two, I guess, steerage and sales, you know, because when you do it, when I do an ocean crossing, I don't run the motor at all. It's just sailing. <clears throat> It was my first meal when I got to Hawaii. I I um I can't remember if I told this story before or not, but I'll tell it again. Um, I wobbled to the Hard Rock Cafe and got a veggie burger. Um, I was walking like a drunken hobo, man. It was like after being at sea for 32 days. I didn't get land sick. A lot of people get land sick, but I was walking like staggering all over the sidewalk, all the way to, and it was. I don't know. It was like a mile and a half or something. And um, I think I was talking to you on the phone when I was walking there. Right? You were, yeah. And uh, yeah, I was just staggering everywhere. It was completely absurd. 
Yeah, um, and you couldn't get up the stairs. Yeah, when I got to the stairs, they must have. They were probably going to cut me off. They probably. I don't drink, but they probably thought they were going <laughs> to cut me off because I had to hold the handrail and like slowly take steps up the stairs, like because the stairs were moving like crazy. And um, yeah, it was hilarious. <clears throat> Somebody from Brazil asked how you study to do your journey, like what, how you prepare? Um, lots of time on the water. Mm -hmm. um, I had done a lot of yacht deliveries, a lot of sailing locally, a lot of adventure sailing. Um, I had 5,000 nautical miles of passage making alone before I sailed to Hawaii. So a lot, just a lot of time on the water, on different boats with different people. Anytime you get on a boat with somebody, you learn something. Um, someone said, is sailing to Hawaii from California hard for one person? You make it look easy. <clears throat> if the boat is sound and prepared and ready, um, it is not, well, I don't know. It's like hard to say, is it hard? Um, it depends on your, how, and I've said this before, but depends on how comfortable you are being uncomfortable. Um, and uh, actually, this brings me to a point. I'm going to have to do like a general Q&A page on my website, I think, because I get this so many of the same questions over and over again. But in regards to doing it solo, um, the biggest sort of obstacle solo is the no sleep sort of thing. So I would, I would go to sleep. <clears throat> I would start my night shift at like 9 p.m. And I would set an alarm for the top of the hour every hour. <clears throat> And then if you're lucky, the, you sleep till the alarm goes off, you get up, you look around for ships, you check the course, you check your cells, adjust the cells as needed, lay back down and try to get as much sleep as you can until the next alarm goes off. Most of the time you don't sleep the whole hour either because of the sounds of the ship, the movement of the ship, or because you have to do a sail adjustment midway through because the boat does something silly. So I would say that battling fatigue for me was the most challenging part. But once you get in kind of a, a routine of it, but I'm pretty comfortable being uncomfortable. So it's not hard for me, but somebody that's used to getting like eight hours a night sleep, it might be an absolute nightmare for them. Someone's asking if Sarah is new crew. Uh, no, she's old crew. <laughs> We've been like, very good friends for a very, very long time. She came out and hung out in Hawaii. Um, she's going to make another trip out so we can check some stuff out before I leave. And uh, I'm at her house. Lean in, Sarah. I'm at her house right now in Los Angeles. So you guys, if you guys probably saw her on um, some of the videos. Uh, what else? Do I have an AS transmitter or just receive? I only have a receiver. My receiver failed three days into my passage. Um I made sure it worked and everything. I even have video footage, I think, on the outtakes showing it working near Los Angeles, and then it stopped working. Um, since then, I have bought a new one that I have yet to install, so I'll have a brand new one on the next passage. I think this is an interesting question. Did you love the ocean as a kid also? Um, <laughs> I didn't know the ocean until I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, I had never seen the ocean until I... Um, moved to California as a teenager and um, it blew my mind. I saw it in San Francisco for the first time right after a big storm and I was speechless. Um, so I grew up in Hobbs, New Mexico in the desert. Um, so I'm more accustomed to tumbleweeds or at least I was <laughs> prior to this. Um, hello from Colombia. How do I get internet out there? You don't get internet out there. Uh, I use Iridium Go, uh, which turns my iPhone and iPad into a sat phones primarily to download the weather every day. Um, but it also, when you buy the top data package, it, well, it's the weather, it's my tracker, and then I have unlimited texting so that I could contact my short team. Now, you can't send photos or anything like that, but you can do basic text messages, um, which came in very handy. What up, Brian? Um, Brian Wilson, uh, is my good buddy in Oahu. Brian, how is your knee? He took me out, him and his buddies took me out spearfishing for the first time. And I just watched them as we got circled by Galapagos sharks. And, uh, it was really fun. And I can't wait to go back out and have them show me more stuff. 
<clears throat> also, Brian's the one that was in the Black Hawk helicopter uh, on the Makua episode. Uh, that was so cool. Uh, someone's saying hi to you. This was, somebody was asking about sailing around the world in a 22-foot cabin. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Um, sea Breeze Services. Um, I'm pretty sure that you're the one that sent me the little tang repair on the uh, tiller post. Is that correct? I just like looked up that image today. Thank you so much, Irene. That is awesome. That's going straight to the haul out. <clears throat> um, Someone's looking at boats 20. Hi from Iran. That is awesome. Woo! I would love to get Iran. Um, thank you, Randy. Thanks for everything. Have a good night. Um, hello from Australia. John, I plan on being in Australia in about a year, year or so. That'd be cool. Um, what else? This is if you use any jive brakes or preventers. I use a preventer when I'm going wing and wing, uh, like a line preventer, not any, not any boom brakes or anything. Um, have you ever been to Ireland? <laughs> uh, I have not. Hello, Kimberly. Nice to see you. Tuning in. Um, Salty Butterfly in the chat is Kimberly Wood, who was just on the episode of Electric Beach recently. And um, I have a really cool, well, she joined me in Kaneohe for some adventures, but then also last month I flew to the Big Island and filmed her working with the University of Colorado. Um, they were doing a, a bunch of research on this, the new Spinner Dolphin um, Protection Act, a Marine Mammal Protection Act to try to you know, educate the public on the, the need for letting the spinner dolphins rest. Um, so that's a special episode that's going to be coming up soon that I'm excited to share with everyone. Um, the spinner dolphins hunt at night and sleep in the daytime, and they sleep by slowly swimming in circles in the bays. And what people, tourists, and, and even locals alike don't understand is like they're actually, they need to rest during that time. But they, people think, well, they're not moving away, so they're just hanging out. So they'll swim out and want to experience and be with them. But what they're doing is they're keeping them from getting their rest. So um, there's some important outreach taking place to try to educate people on the need to let the spinners kind of have their space. And I'm excited to put out this episode coming up soon to talk about that. <clears throat> what else? Mm -hmm. More questions about the rudder business. Um, the the rudder I'm hauling out next month and uh, repairing the rudder. So um, there'll be a whole episode on that. Um, I also do some other odds and ends hauling out in Hawaii. Um, what else? Let me see if I. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot of overlap. Let me see. Um, there's not a lot of overlap, but if you're on, I don't know if I should talk about this. <laughs> um, Are you going to go through Cape Horn? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do Cape Horn at some point, without a doubt. There's no question about it. Um, I'll either double it or I'll go the happy way, but yeah, Cape Horn is definitely on my radar. Um, yes, I'm looking very forward to uh, the passages and the destinations. I've actually felt myself getting homesick for ocean passages. Um, and um, yeah, it's funny. It's like something gets in your soul about being out there alone with nothing around. You know, especially the boat will be in such a better place when I leave for the South Pacific that um, I am very excited. Um, a lot of kind of big announcements coming up on the channel soon. Um, what else? Hello from upstate New York and the Jersey Shore. Let's see. Uh, 
I don't have a Jordan series drug, but I do have a drug named Squidward who has <laughs> put in the hours with me that I trust. Um, yeah. Jason Howard, that's one of my passages. I'm sailing to the Lion Islands in May, in April, uh, the upper Lion Islands, and then on to the South Pacific. <clears throat> um, somebody's asking about the rudder post. No, I spoke about it a little earlier, uh, so try not to repeat myself too much. But um, yeah, I'm going to be dealing with the whole rudder thing in uh, next in uh, February or March. Um, thank you so much for the donation. It's going straight to the haul out. <clears throat> Um, what else? What else? Someone's asking about the garbage patches. Um, I sail directly through what's considered the Pacific garbage patch, but um, I didn't see uh, I didn't see visible plastic. But that doesn't mean that it's not the garbage patch. Still, uh, so much of that is microplastics. It breaks down into microplastics, which is what actually the animals and, and sea creatures ingest, which is far more deadly than, you know, just like the top of a, you know, or a plastic bottle or something like when that stuff breaks down is that's what creates these terrible scenarios. Um, so when asked, but something crazy in the night sky there, nope, not at sea. Um, lots of satellites, but I've seen weird stuff in the skies of New Mexico growing up. <laughs> No big shocker there. Um, so someone said South Pacific closed, mate. Uh, actually, Kiribati just announced yesterday that they're open. So, And also Fiji is open. American Samoa is open. Guam is open. And so on and so forth. Um, so there's, there's lots of possibilities. And it's January. And I believe that uh, a lot of countries are talking about being open by April and May, so I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> um, someone asked what I think the red thing was. I think I had a submerged container. I mean, it was red, and it was big enough that it damaged my rudder. So thank you, Jan. Appreciate it. Awesome. Um, my guess is a container, but I have no idea because I didn't see it, so there's no way for me to really know. <clears throat> um, what else? Let me see. Uh, says, uh, or am I selling to Rio de Janeiro? Um, I will probably go. It. I will get to Rio at some point, and but that would probably be after I sell to Africa, and then across to Brazil. I'm pretty tempted to sell across like Ascension Island and then Brazil, and then beat down through the currents to Rio, and then on down. Um, and double the horn, but I don't know if that's like a fool's errand or not. I mean, Kretschmer did it in a boat similar to my size, but I don't know if I want to be, he also had somebody else on board. Um, uh, let's see how much fishing will you typically do on a long trip? Um, once I get better at fishing, I'll, I'll be, I'll fish as much as I can when I, if I need food. Um, I don't believe in taking things that I don't need, but <clears throat> if I need to have food on board, then um, I will fish. Um, so I asked about well, so Nova Scotia. Yeah, eventually I'd like to go up the east coast of America or north the United States of America and uh, Nova Scotia and then on to Greenland at some point. Who tattooed my back? Uh, Sean Barber did my back and my torso and a lot of my suit. Thank you so much, PMCC, for the donation. Um, yeah, Sean Barber. I'm actually doing an episode soon on the history of tattooing as it relates to sailors and the history of body modification. Um, so that'll be coming up. I've already been working on that. Um, what else? Um, do you have a favorite YouTube channel? Uh, favorite YouTube channel is Free Range Sailing. I love those guys. They are awesome. Um, what else? What else? You guys got any other questions? What else? Can we go see the Great Barrier Reef? 
Yeah, yeah. When I go to Australia, I'll I'll be staying on the East Coast. I think. Um, also, I plan on spending six six to eight months in New Zealand if uh, I'm able to if they're open and I'm able to get a visa. I'd like to spend a lot of time there and then sell from there over to Australia, make my way up the east coast of Australia into Indonesia and then up into Southeast Asia. And I'll probably spend a year in, Aus in Southeast Asia. Um, I don't know if I'm going to Palmyra. Um, it's kind of downwind of the other islands. So I'm not sure. I was, I was reading about it today. Um, it's interesting, but I like the fact that Palmyra is actually the considered as close to the center of the Pacific Ocean as you can get. So that's pretty cool. Um, oh, Argentina in the house. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so cool. Someone says, best sailing documentary. Um, Following Seas is a really, really cool documentary. Um, Weekend Sailor is one of my favorite documentaries about sailing. I love that one. It's so cool. Um, did I have a moment of panic when I lost the rudder? Yeah, I don't really panic. So I didn't panic. That was bone. Um, uh, what else? Is anchoring duration regulated in Hawaii? Is sure. what? Anchoring, dura anchoring duration. How long you can anchor? Yeah, so in Hawaii, um, thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it. Um, in Hawaii, you're only supposed to stay at one anchorage for 72 hours. You can move to another anchorage, um, but yeah, you're only you're only supposed to stay there for 72 hours. And um, yeah, when I when I leave Hawaii, I'll make a video talking about cruising in Hawaii, um, given all the truthful in and ins and outs. <laughs> but. Until I leave Hawaii, I will not be discussing that on video. Um, I love Hawaii. Absolutely love it. And gorgeous anchorages, amazing. It's fantastic, and I can't wait to hit all the other islands. Um, but dealing with the officials um, is a challenge at times. At the best of times, it's a challenge. Um, looks like my brothers are... Taking care of business over there, deleting people's silliness. Thank you, guys. Um, let's see. Someone asked if you're going to make it back to Catalina. I Probably. will likely never go back to Catalina. On, on your boat. It'll be many, many, many years. <laughs> yeah, after I finish my sur first circumnavigation, I'll probably sail over and not anchor at Little Fisherman's Cove because it's such a nightmare. Um, but you might die there, no? Huh? You might go diving there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I've done Catalina. <clears throat> um, someone says, what is the reasoning for the regulation on anchoring? I think the main reasoning is a valid one. And it's because like real estate is so expensive in Hawaii that, and we have a similar problem here in Southern California. They have to worry about people kind of like living on junk boats and like polluting these beautiful places. So if you have someone who's irresponsible on just a dilapidated junk boat living under anchor and like flushing their waste directly into the bay, they're spoiling it for everyone um, and likely like poisoning the reefs and stuff. So I understand their reasoning for regulating it. It's like, you know, otherwise there would be, it's kind of similar to what's happening on a different scale in French Polynesia. So there are so many people out there cruising and especially people who aren't necessarily sailors who have a lot of money that buy fancy boats. And then they just go plop down and take advantage of the situation in French Polynesia. They've kind of ruined it for all the other cruisers. So, um, so that's, that's why they have to regulate it. I understand why they do. Um, but yeah, it does, does make things a little more complicated. Would I circumnavigate with that same boat? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is my forever boat. Um, even if someone gave me a big, beautiful boat, I would just sell it and put the money in savings. <laughs> Trite is my, is my boat. I love her. <clears throat> um, what else? Um, what else? Uh, no, I don't, I don't need a ham radio because I have Iridium Go. Um, 
originally I was interested in SSB, but it's, it takes up a lot of space, a lot of power, and you can do a billion times more with Iridium Go than you can with a SSB. <clears throat> Someone asked if I had spending time in Sea Cortez. No, I planned on going to Sea Cortez and spending a year down there, but um, everything changed with my life, and um, now I'm heading to South Pacific. What has been my favorite find so far on the islands? Favorite find? I think Kane Ohe was probably the most spectacular place. The sandbar is completely bananas. I was actually editing. I finished editing the Kane Ohe passage video today, but the sandbar is so crazy, and I can't wait to show you guys that episode. Um, and also the other day, me and Kimberly hiked out and saw the albatross who were breeding and nesting. And that was like one of the happiest moments of my life, I think, to get to be so close to those magical creatures at kind of, uh, uh, Kayana Point on Oahu. Fantastic. Um, someone mentioned Starlink. Yeah, that might be an option. Saw a good thing today that Sarah sent me of like a bunch of cats sleeping inside one of the Starlink satellites. So <laughs> I guess they're self-heating. So cats found out that it's a good place to sleep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would, uh, I have, I would not get another pet dog or cat on my boat. Um, it uh, just adds too much difficulty for me. <clears throat> I love all animals, but yeah, the places I want to go and also going to islands, they, it's really hard to take pets to islands. Um, what else? Um, Sam Bennett's asking, hope I get down to New Zealand. Um, hoping to be there this time next year. Um, I've never been to Boston. What else? Mm. What else? Yeah. Any other questions? Um, you guys got any other questions? Hello, Kurt. How you doing? Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, no, a, a cruise ship is my absolute hellish nightmare. Um, I'm not a huge fan of human beings. So um, <laughs> being on board with 2,000 other people is like my absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get, uh, what does it say? Afraid of running into any big waves on your path. No, no, not worried about big waves. I know there's, you know, it's like, I don't plan on spending extended periods of time in the Southern Ocean with my boat. And that's the main place you have to really, really worry about it. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, I'm not a big Matissier fan, but he has a good quote that said, like, if you cap a wine bottle and throw it into a hurricane, when the hurricane's done, the wine bottle's going to be there. So if you can keep the water out of a boat, you're all good. Um, do I have issues with seasickness? Absolutely. Um, on the last passage, I didn't get seasick at all, but generally I'll, I'll get seasick if the boat's just bobbing around. Also, the first couple of days, most people get seasick. There's some really evil people out there who never experienced seasickness. But other than that, um, yeah, but this last passage, I didn't get seasick at all. Um, um, How does Tretea handle rough seas? Uh, Tretea handles rough seas very well because she's full keeled. Um, and even better when she has a working rudder. Um, someone's asking again if I panicked. Um, um, uh, when there were, No, I didn't panic. Like, as soon as I lost steering, I hit record. Um, panicking out there doesn't, doesn't help at all. I mean, I think that is, I don't know if panic's the right word, but like that, that silence you see, that's you in 
That's me in crisis mode. Yeah, that's yeah. crisis mode. Me sitting <laughs> quiet and not, yeah. <laughs> not moving. <laughs> yeah, that's me in crisis mode. But I don't panic. That's what, yeah, I don't yeah. throw tantrums or anything like that. Not about that, anyway. <laughs> um, what is my favorite sailing book? Um, I think I've read, I've listened to the audiobook for endurance. My favorite sailing book is probably, um, uh, can't remember the two two at the horn or something like that. It's it's Hal Roth's book about when they did Cape Horn in Chile. That's the most inspiring book for me, and I've read it a ton. Um, my favorite like old style sailing book is uh, Two Years Before the Mast. I love that book because I came up sailing around Southern California, so I love imagining that book. Um, but yeah. Two against the horn or two around the horn. I can't remember the actual title of the Hal Roth book, but um. isn't one of your what boat is right for you? That that episode does that talk about somebody's asking about what would you look for in, in a good? Oh, uh, someone. Yeah, you're asking about a good used boat. Mm -hmm. um, I have a video on my channel. It's called like. I don't know what it's called. It's it's like, you know, what, what you boat? need for your first boat or what boat do you need? And it, I break down everything that you should be thinking about based on what kind of sailing you're going to be doing as to what kind of boat you should consider. <clears throat> Someone said, uh, let's see. Um, someone just asked what videos they should watch next after the rudder. Well, if you're a sailor, you should watch the how to how to steer with a drogue. Um, I think everybody should. I did a whole thing telling people how to steer with a drogue. That was a very important one, I think. Um, but um, uh, I don't know any of the any of the Hawaii videos are fun. I think will kind of get you up to speed because I did a temporary repair and then I started hitting all the anchorages around Oahu, and that's a fun spot to kind of see. Um, and then if you're not bored, you can always, there's a lot of videos to go back to. Um, somebody else, let me see here. Are you going to relocate to Hawaii for good? No, I'm only in Hawaii until April and then I sell for the South Pacific. Um, where do I normally live? I used to live in Los Angeles, but now I live full time on Tritea. I lived in Los Angeles for just a couple months shy of 20 years. Um, do I feel true freedom while sailing? 1,000%. There's nothing better. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I like that. So the drug video should, should get an ASA number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that the PDF I made for the drug, I hope everybody prints that out and throws it in their chart table. Um, somebody mentioned the Ocean Cruisers podcast. Um, yeah, that was a that was a long conversation. I was shocked at how long we got done talking. I was like, wow. Um, it says when you set out, you pick your best route, best weather provided. What are your circumstances? You find yourself in a bad storm or situation, considering. No plan is 100%. Uh, the main thing about not getting in a really bad storm is sailing in the correct season. There are many longtime sailors. Like, I think the parties never were in any really gnarly storms because they only sailed in the correct season in whatever seas they were in. And then you winter or hide out for hurricane season in places that are safe. So there's a, quite a bit of planning that can go into it. And then, sure, you're going to be in things that even may be over a gale, but if your boat is an ocean going boat, it won't be a problem. It just will be uncomfortable. Um, what else? Have you sailed the Atlantic? Uh, yeah, I've done some sailing in the Atlantic. I sailed, uh, did a crewed on a yacht delivery from Puerto Rico to Bermuda to North Carolina. And, um, boy, the Atlantic is serious business. Um, you guys have a whole lot more like angry seas. The Pacific is very polite, I always say.
Um, somebody's asking, oh, oh, it's Barry's asking about the islands south of Tahiti. I think all of those, aren't those like the lower cooks? And those are part of New Zealand. So, but the people have, yeah, the societies are a tricky thing. It's like, especially right now, um, I've messaged with a number of people that are in French Polynesia and have been all throughout. And people, I, I've gotten messages from people right now. They kind of gave me the lowdown. They're like, yeah, it's possible, but there's just certain, it's not like it used to be. So that's things to consider. That's why, like, I'm very tempted to go to the Phoenix Islands. And um, that's more my jam, but it depends on if I can get clearance to go to those islands or not. Hello, Stephen. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah, 32 days was definitely the longest sailing on the ocean I've done, and I hope it's the longest I'll ever do. <laughs> it was, like, longer than I anticipated for sure. Have you ever considered sailing the in entirety around the world? Yeah, I mean, I'm circumnavigating, but as far as, like, a solo nonstop, um, I have no interest in sailing solo nonstop around the world because I want to see every, the whole reason I sail is to travel and see places. So I have no interest in sailing past a bunch of brilliant places just to say I sailed in the circle. Um, Kurt's asking about my system maintaining watch when sailing solo. Close to shore, I have an alarm. I sleep in the cockpit and I have an alarm that goes off every 15 minutes and I pop up and look for boats. And then ideally the AIS is running and I have the AIS alarm on. Um, but anytime I'm within close range of a, sh a known active shipping lane or a lot of like place where there's a lot of pleasure boats, um, I sleep in the cockpit and wake up every 15 minutes. And you generally only sleep from like midnight to, you only doze like that from midnight to five. But um, further out at sea, you can you can do, do longer stretches. Hello, Mittal. <clears throat> She's asking what she missed. I'm going to kill you, Mittal. <laughs> um, Metal was there when I first bought the boat and I'm very grateful that she filmed everything for that, the, those early days. It's a, it's a pleasure to have that footage now. Um, Someone's asking what music you listen to when you're out at sea, I'm assuming, but you don't really watch TV or listen to music. No, when I, if I listen to like on the passage, the only music I really listen to is like Duke Ellington. Um, I listened to Edith Piaf. I listened to Claire Rockmore's uh, theremin compositions and kind of jazz standards. And then as I got closer to Hawaii, I have this collection of like 1920s Hawaiian guitar music that is really cool. And so I did that to try to get in the spirit of Aloha. Um, someone's asking, sailing duo would be much more pleasant with watch and company. Oh yeah. Like, Short-handed sailing is, is much more pleasant than single-handed. But I will say, <clears throat> I would rather do a long solo ocean crossing for a variety of, reasons, variety of reasons because I don't mind being miserable. But if I'm on board with someone who is very uncomfortable and you get out there and they're miserable, that would make life a thousand times more miserable for me. <laughs> than just me being out there by myself. So it depends on the person and whether the person's like actually into ocean sailing. And um, it takes a special kind of masochist to <laughs> be into <laughs> ocean crossings. Um, when I sailed to Antarctica, if there was a big reward, well, a big reward for me would be going to Antarctica. That's all the reward I need. Um, yeah, I've actually, <clears throat> I actually think about sailing to Antarctica a lot. Um, I'm reading a kind of a terrible book right now. I hate this book, but I'm going to finish it um, about these dudes that sailed to Antarctica on a boat that was not equipped for it. Um, and then I've read Icebird, which is one of my favorite sailing books. And his boat was very small and maybe not equipped, which is, it's a fantastic David Lewis. He's a guy's a genius. Um, so I'm a romantic and yeah, for sure. I flirt with the idea of sailing to Antarctica, but Reading this book with these dummies, um, it's made me be like, maybe I don't want to be that dummy. Um, so, but that's a long ways off. <clears throat> uh, 
um, someone asked how long you plan to live aboard for, but that's your home. I yeah, I <laughs> live aboard from now on. So I, I guess that I mean I'm there's no there's no end in sight. The the loose idea is that I'm giving myself 10 years to do the circumnavigation. If I get the first one done in shorter than that, um, then that's chill. Then, then I'll just keep exploring. And then it would almost be good because then I could just meander wherever and not have to worry about trying to be like, okay, I finished my circumnavigation. But again, I'm open to whatever. So even if I end up just wandering and never completing the circle and just seeing like every nook and cranny, I'm chill. It's like, I just want to see beautiful things and be on my boat. <clears throat> Scott said he'd like to see penguins doing their thing. Well, Col uh, Scott, when I'm in Africa, you'll have to come uh, and hang out with me, and then wait, that penguin's there. It's not as cold either. <clears throat> Someone's asking if I would auction off a spot for deckhands. Um, my boat's way too small. Um, yeah. Unless, like, you're someone that I slow dance with, I'm not going to have crew on my boat. Um, have I ever ran out of food at sea? No. No, you just provision appropriately. And uh, hope that that won't happen. <clears throat> if you couldn't sail on an Albert 30, what boats would you look at? Um, depends. I guess it depends. There's a lot of great boats out there. And I have a video that kind of talks about that, that on my my channel. Um, would you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Get me a piece of pizza. Mm -hmm. I'm dying right now. <laughs> um, we ordered pizza, so I'm going to mock some pizza while we chat. That's what happened last time during the chat. Is like I started it right at dinner and hadn't eaten. Um, someone's asking, wouldn't a longer boat be more comfortable? Yeah, a longer boat would for sure be more comfortable. But... Um, um, Kevin's trying to slow dance with me. Um, a longer boat would be more comfortable, but it comes down to a couple things. One, when I bought my boat, uh, I was aware that I was going to be shorthanded or, or single-handed sailing. And, um, the other thing is I knew that I would always be poor. So I was like, the bigger boat you get, the cost of like keeping up a bigger boat goes up a lot. So everything come down, came down to, especially when I was looking at try, looking for my forever boat, I was like, I have to get a boat that I can afford to maintain by like working around the world. Um, and so that's, that's why I went with a 30 foot boat. I think 40 to 42 is kind of the ideal spot for shorthanded sailing because it's big enough to be very comfortable and to stow a lot of stuff. And, um, but small enough that it's easy to maneuver single-handed in close, you know, close to shore. Someone asked about Flicka 20s. Flicka 20s are rad. They're super cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're just very tiny, you know. So, sorry, I'm going to be munching right now. I am so hungry. What else? You guys got more questions? Uh, someone asked about the fishing scenario. I had a rod and a reel on board and only a couple more lures, and I'm not an experienced fisherman, so I didn't want to waste it being silly, and I didn't need the food. Um, so I asked you to get a particular job when I'm low on cash. Um, right now YouTube pays is a hundred percent of my income. Um, but I have my captain's license to do yacht deliveries or to drive tour boats. Um, and I am scuba certified so I can work on people's boats. An old salt once told me, he was like, if you can go to the top of someone's boat and the bottom of their boat, you can work in any Marine in the world. And I was like, well, I can do both of those. So. What else? Um, I'm 
someone's asking what I do to pass the time. I read or on a long passage. I read, I write, um, and I edit videos. What's my zodiac sign? I'm a triple Aries, <laughs> which is most people's nightmare. Very consistent. I'm very consistent <laughs> and also a nightmare. What do I need to edit videos? Uh, I edit everything on Adobe Premiere, um, like an old version. My computer's from 2011. So. Until it dies, I, I, I'm able to edit offline. Someone said, I'd be mistaken for Jesus Christ by go serving. I used to work with these Latin dudes who called me sexy Jesus. Hi, <laughs> right, Tanya. Our video of the Haiku Stairs is coming out in like two weeks. I'll send it to you guys ahead of time. How old am I? I'll be 47 in April. Have I ever had an anchor drag? I've had my anchor drag a ton. Um, my new Mantis is so bulldog that it does not drag much. But even my new Mantis drug because I had really poor holding in Pokai Bay, so I just hauled up and put it somewhere good. Um, no, this is just like, someone's asking about my pizza. It's, uh, I think it's just basil and tomato. Someone asked, um, where am I located right now? I live in Honolulu, but I'm currently visiting Los Angeles. I'll eventually be going to Europe for sure by boat. Um, it is very good pizza, by the way. <clears throat> Joe said, love the Channel Islands book. <clears throat> There's a really good kind of extensive cruising guide that I've been writing. It's with my editor, Alana, right now. Um, so that's, I kind of put the cruising guide book on hold until I could get this book done. And now that this book's done and out, um, we're going kind of full throttle on the cruising guide. So hopefully that'll be out before the sailing season for Southern California that comes up. Someone asked if I'll be in Hawaii in April. Uh, yes, I should. Yeah, I'm leaving in, at some point in April. I don't know when. Someone said, what got you into the hobby? I'm not sure this is a hobby anymore. Yeah, no. I got into um, kind of too much to talk about here, but there's an interview with me on 59 North on the Wind podcast where I talk about how I got into sailing, if you want to check that out. Someone asked, monohull or catamaran, and why? I'm not even getting into that conversation. Monohull, for me, is the only choice. Um, how do you get to live in Marines? I'm confused about the question a little. Marinas, maybe? Were you part of the Navy? Oh, no. No, no. Everyone else in my family served, and I'm grateful that they served for our country, but, um, my mama said I was too much like her, so I'm not really cut out for military service. I think they're asking like anchorages versus marinas. Like, the um, in Hawaii, anchor. the um, the state harbors have guest slips, and you have up to a um, hundred and twenty days per calendar year at the the state run harbors. Just got a text from my brother, Scott Tillery, who's on the chat right now. How did you make the leap into sailing full time? I don't know that it 
was a leader. No, it wasn't really. A long I worked, <laughs> yeah. I worked for four years, maybe more, solid to get to the point to untie the lines for good. It more like made the leap into the abyss. And um, I only, I didn't, I only had like a thousand dollars, I think, in my savings account when I left LA. I was just selling to Hawaii. I was like, well, I'll just get a job. I make good money in Los Angeles when I work here. So I knew I could always fly back and work here and make some dough if I got low. But with the success of the passage video, um, now YouTube is like making me enough to where it's covering my bills at the moment. So for the moment, I'm, I'm good. Um, do I drink alcohol or cross the Pacific? I'm, I don't drink alcohol at all. I've been sober my whole life. But if I was selling with someone that wanted to drink alcohol, I would I would have no problem with them drinking alcohol as long as they were getting blackout drunk. <laughs> Carrying a couple of ratchet straps on board. I have I have a bunch of uh, ratchet straps on board, and I will forever. <laughs> Um, no. no, but I would love to, someone asked about ball lightning. I would love to see ball lightning. I haven't even seen the green flash yet. It's like me and Kimberly were out, tried to see it the other day. She's seen it a bunch because she's always, she works on the water. I have never seen the green flash. I you know how many times I've burned the corneas out of my head, staring at the sun, hoping to see the green flash. Makes me crazy. <laughs> me too. Um, um, we ever be going to the east or west coast of Africa? Yeah, oh yeah, oh, for sure. Like when I sail across the Indian Ocean, I'll hit all the islands, do Madagascar, and then sail over to Africa. And I'll probably spend, I don't know, a year in around that area. I would imagine. I, I want to see as much as I can in Africa. So. Uh, someone asked, when it's night at sea, is it pitch black? <clears throat> when there's no moon, it is very, 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 very dark. <laughs> the stars are absolutely fantastic if there's not cloud cover. Um, what else? Um, yeah, someone's asking about pirates. Yeah, I'm not going to be, like, hanging out in Somalia, like, sunbathing or anything, but... um. If you stay near South, you know, Madagascar and um, <clears throat> South Africa and stuff like Delos, they spend a lot of time over there and never had any problems. I mean, they have people, local bandits, but that's just any place you go that's like, you know, uh, has like problems with poverty. That's you're going to run into that. Um. April 17th, but now my birthday is April 11th. Someone says it's legal to have a gun on board. It is, but I would never have a gun on board. Um, I believe in, like, I'm American. I grew up shooting guns. I've all, almost always owned a gun, but I no longer own a gun, and I wouldn't have one on board. Mostly for a couple reasons. For one, the country's laws are so dramatically different. As you enter most countries, you can't have a firearm. And you have to declare it, you know, and sometimes they'll take it and it adds this whole layer of like nightmare. And then if you just try to hide it somewhere and you get caught, then you're an arms smuggler and you get a prison or you get the death sentence in some of these places. So I don't have any interest in that scenario. And then the other big thing that kind of changed my opinion on having guns on board was a pretty amazing quote from Lynn party where she was saying they spoke with a sheriff. Some, I don't remember what country it was in. And they asked him, they were like, you know, what's your opinion? Should we have a gun on board? And he turned to them and he was like, are you willing to kill someone? And they were like, uh, and he was like, because if you pull that gun out, you have to kill that person. 
Otherwise, he has to kill you so you don't kill him. And then, and then he was like, and if you successfully do that, kill that person, and he doesn't kill you, then you've murdered someone in a foreign country, and you know everything opens up from there. Not not to mention the psychological aspect of like taking another person's life, you know, who may or may not have been trying to supply for his family. Not saying it's right to rob people, but it's just a whole thing. You know, um, there's a lot of ways to detour people from coming on their boat. Like I'll shoot someone in the face with a flare gun. No problem. Um, also like a wrist rocket with like steelies, you hit somebody in the head with one of those things, it's charging at your boat and you're going to stop them. But the main thing is not putting yourself in places where you're going to easily come into that sort of scenario. Um, the first place I'll have to really start worrying about that sort of thing where there's pirates or that is like a near Malaysia. Um, but for the most part, if you, you know, you plan your passages and you don't, you know, you don't go into places where there's known activity, um, chances are you're not going to run into piracy. One said you need another slice of pizza. I do need another slice of pizza. You're right. I'm on that. Um, <laughs> um, you have an episode about getting your captain's license, right? What's no, I don't actually. Oh, you don't? Um, yeah, I have my captain's license. The, the main thing is like you just have to study for it. You have to learn the material and test for it. The hardest part is getting all the sea days you need to actually get your captain's license. So it's time on the water is the hardest part. Um, cause it's a lot. I have my master's license, so thank you. Uh, yeah. What else? Someone said, I used Adobe Premiere on a 2011 computer. Can it be assumed you work or have worked in graphic design? Um, I worked in porno. So I was an editor in porno for a long time. So that's where I learned how to edit. And, um, but I know I used to build websites. I've done graphic design. Yeah, a lot. But my filming and editing all came from the adult industry. Um, what else? Do you need nav lighting in the open sea or just near land? Uh, I run, I legally, you're supposed to run your navigation lights anytime it's dark, even in the open sea. And I do always. Um, so, yeah. Someone says, is the boat insurance less if you have a captain's license? I don't I don't think so. Someone says, how long was I in the porno industry? Long enough to know a lot of things. What else? <laughs> My <laughs> Say what's up to Scott. <laughs> um, what else? Someone asked if I have my six pack. No, I have my master's, master's license with all tow and sail auxiliary, all endorsements. Yeah, I'm not going to get into the <laughs> mechanics of the porno industry, but I've seen things I can't unsee. How much fuel do I use on long passages? I use zero fuel because I have a sailboat. Um. I'm not dodging UFO questions. I've just answered it. I've just answered those questions like four times tonight. I haven't seen any UFOs out at sea, but I have seen weird stuff in New Mexico growing up. I have issues with dirty fuel. I have not had issues with dirty fuel, but I will likely as I'm getting into far fun places. How do you keep mentally stable on long trips under a lot of pressure? I don't know that I'm ever mentally stable. I'm just very calm. <laughs> no, that's a different podcast. <laughs> um, 
Can I have a slice, please? Yes. <laughs> if we had one of those like uh, UF or what they call like Star Trek sort of things, I could beam it over to you. Which other YouTube sailing creators have you met slash no? I know Mark Kildragger, who's on here right now. Um, there was earlier. Um, who else? I met that dude, that funny guy. I think his channel Sail Life. He had a meetup here a very long time ago, and I went to that and met him. Mm -hmm. I don't even know is he sailing yet. It's like he's been refix. He's been fixing that boat for like ten years. You know, Sam. Oh, yeah, Sam. <laughs> I know Sam. I didn't think about that because Sam, me and Sam came, like, Sam bought his boat two slips from mine before he had a channel. So I've known Sam since before he was on YouTube. Um... What else? Will you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. The carbonated? Mm -hmm. What's my beliefs? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I believe in this pizza is fucking awesome. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's my main belief. <laughs> I do not smoke weed. I've been sober my whole life. But I voted for marijuana every time it came up in California because I wanted that tax dollars. They still are not taxing that shit, though. Oh, they are. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> Half the price of a purchase. Do I like the Coast Guard? Um, absolutely, 1,000%. Coast Guard save a lot of people. They put themselves in danger. And um, I think they're absolutely amazing, and I'm very grateful that they exist. Someone said they like anchors. Me too. <laughs> pizza com comparable to... <laughs> Brian, no. The pizza at the Harbor Pub is so good. It is insane how good that pizza is. It is not. This pizza is not as good. This is good pizza, but it's not Harbor Pub Waikiki pizza, I assure you. Got saying that the Coast Guard also got your dinghy back, yeah? Yep. <laughs> um, have I slipped anchor at night? Yes, many times at Catalina Island. Lots of times. Okay, you got to sleep with one eye open. <clears throat> Um, no, I've never had sh close encounters with sharks while sailing. I've seen sharks. I've seen white sharks that were like six feet long off Catalina, but I love sharks. I'm not scared of sharks. I think they're amazing creatures and it only hurts if they taste you. What else? I have know. I sold in the Great Lakes? No, I haven't. I have not, but I know you guys get some real weather up there. <clears throat> I'm so interested in all these comments that my little brothers are deleting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, I wish it showed what was deleted, but. <clears throat> have you ever been to Bermuda? I have been to Bermuda. Yeah. Where's that question at? Uh, yeah, I sailed across the Bermuda Triangle from Puerto Rico to Bermuda. I see it. Yeah. West Space West asked. Space, yeah. Bermuda is amazing. And if you want really bad $7 coffee, that's the place for you. <laughs> did you see the marlin under the tuna? You didn't, right? You didn't see no, I saw, I saw the marlin under the mm -hmm. tuna. At first, I thought that was a shark. I put my hands in filming. I saw a big flash of white. I pulled my hands up. <laughs> I climbed up on the dodger and stared in the water until I saw that it was a marlin. And then I got back into filming. Um, what else? Have you ever had to dive for your anchor? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I dive on my anchor every time I set it. Right. Always. You got to. Someone said, what are some of your tattoos? I'm doing a whole tattoo episode soon. So keep an eye on the channel for that. Um, what tools did I wish I had? A damn ratchet strap. <laughs> That's the number one tool I wish I had at sea. I also wish I had an underwater electric drill. But, you know, I have an underwater, like a hand drill that works fine. But it would have sped up the process. Um, why didn't you sell the other Hawaiian Islands? Some of the other islands are incredible. I haven't left Hawaii yet. My boat's still there. I'm going to sell to all of them. I just have to fix my rudder. Hard to. I'm not attacking on those channels with a ratchet strap rudder. Someone's asking about my my plugs. They're inch and a quarter. Uh, yeah, me and Sam still st are still in touch for sure. Um, we text each other occasionally. And he was in touch with my brothers while I was at sea and everything was going on. He was he was writing back and forth with them and relaying the messages to me and Sarah as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. What else? Something about the buildup on the bottom of the boat. So it slow you down if you don't. It's great that yes. Oh yeah, for sure. Everyone's. My boat has new bottom paint, so it's not. It doesn't have a lot of growth. Um. Did I have a rudder? Did I have a ladder on the side of the boat during the rudder problem? Yes, I did. I had my swim ladder down. Largest mammal whale ever seen, blue whale, which is the they say is the biggest thing that ever lived. I don't know how they would know that since sea creatures don't fossilize. Uh, no, I've never been through any major hurricanes at sea, and I hope to never, ever, ever, ever have that experience. But that's a kind of an easy thing to avoid. Actually, I talk shit right now, but. <laughs> I got that. I'm like talking shit because Linda was directly below me and could have turned up into me, and then I would have been in it. So that's easy to avoid, but I'm the asshole that went out. They could have gotten hit by a hurricane. So, how long have you been sailing? Um, how long have I been sailing? I've been sailing very seriously since 2015. Like doing ocean stuff. I guess 2014 is when I was in the Orkney Isles. So 2014. Mm -hmm. Someone asked why I don't fish more well in the ocean. I've been vegetarian since 1988 and had long since made the decision to become have a pescatarian diet when I left to go cruising full time. So I'm just now getting to the point to where I'll be eating fish. Um, so that that's the reason I haven't fished in previous things. And my friend Brian, who's on here now, is teaching me how to spearfish, which is actually more interesting to me than fishing with a line because it's more intentional. So it's like I decide, okay, that's a fish that I want to eat, you know, and then you take that fish rather than accidentally taking something and just wounding it. Um, what else? What else? The fastest you've gone with a full keel? Uh, I don't know. Seven knots with the sea behind me, maybe eight knots. But, you know, screaming along at eight miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, we're, we actually already shot one episode with Brian Wilson, who's on the chat right now, of us, our first day going out, and they were teaching me how to spearfish. We're going to do a couple more of those. 
and get some good footage and um, then I'll release one. And <clears throat> especially with them talking about the process, because I'm learning it. And, and then you guys can hear what they have, what they're teaching me as well. <laughs> this is that my brother Scott's <laughs> asking if I'm going to put prints of the drones I've killed on the side of my boat. Yeah, I've lost two drones at sea. So now I'm like, I like shake when I'm flying my drone because I'm so stressed about losing it. Um, yeah, right, Scott, I put the little hash marks. It'd be funny. Um, someone says, how ahead are you on the videos? When was the last video you filmed? Um, I film constantly, but the, I think the, let's see, what is today? Sunday? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's video is my passage back from the West side. And I think that that was shot, that was shot in October. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I'm at, <clears throat> but and I'm just now editing uh, the Kane Ohe adventures. Somebody's, uh, Maytel is asking if I feel more confident because Kimberly teach me. No, Kimberly does it like it's no problem. And I watch her. She just grabs the damn thing, and I'm, like, terrified. If Kimberly, if you're still on here, you can laugh right now. Um <laughs> Kimberly like doesn't, she's a professional drone pilot. So she's just like a super badass. Um, no. Um, and Kimberly also hasn't lost two drones in the sea because she's a badass drone pilot. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I'm terrified. <clears throat> what else? Maytel said, that's how I teach sailing. Here's a funny story for you guys. So you guys see Maytel um, in the chat there. We were dating when I bought um, Tritea, and she went out with me for the first sale. <laughs> um, now, this was the first time I'd ever sailed out of Los Angeles Harbor. Now, if you've never been to Los Angeles Harbor, or you, you don't know anything about it, there's an area right before you get to the lighthouse called Hurricane Gulch where there are these insane downslope winds from Palos Verdes and the winds scream there. And once you get a, like a mile or so, half a mile off past the lighthouse, the winds calm down. So we took Trite out for the first time. Um, I hanged on the 150% Genoa, which is absurdly gigantic. My mainsail could not be reefed. So I had the full main up. I go out. Um, we get out just past the lighthouse and we're sailing, and the wind hadn't come up too gnarly yet, but we're sailing pretty hard over. Metal's down below. She comes running to the companionway and yells, there's water, there's water. And there's like water floating on the cabin saw. And, that, and that's like, and like all the seacocks were like corroded open. The boat was like in a state. It hadn't moved in six years. This is the first time the boat had left the dock in six years. Um, I had just put the new engine in and everything, but so I run down below and, um, I taste the water that was on the cabin sole and it was fresh water. It wasn't salt water. So I was like, okay, we should be fine. Um, I had a bilge pump and everything, but I checked the bilge and the bilge was fine. And what it was, was our forward, my forward water tank, I had filled up, but I didn't know it had a leak I actually had these weird air vents. So when you healed over, um, it would leak water and find its way down to the cabin sole. And, uh, but it was very funny. She looked terrified and I was like, oh no, <laughs> that ain't good. <clears throat> oh good. Kimberly's laughing presently. <laughs> um, um, no, someone asked if I had any desire to sell Canadian waters. Yeah. I, I originally planned to sell from Hawaii to the Aleutians do the Aleutians, Alaska, and uh, the Inside Passage. I'm very interested in high latitude sailing. Just um, I'm just going a different route now. Um, yeah, it's Tritea. 
was loved by the the god Ares, um, but actually the god Ares is a different Ares than the astrological sign Ares, but the name is the same. Um, what else? Someone asked if I had thought about, I would never upgrade to a newer boat ever in a billion years. Was it bittersweet when I left Pokai Bay? Nah, not really. Um, it's like that dude like tried to run me off, but when I called him and told him, I was like, I'm concerned about the weather. He was like, okay, no problem. I think he just wanted me. I think there was another boat that had been camping out there and overstayed. And so he was just kind of flagging everyone. But when I called him, he was so very nice and let me stay there until the, the wind event passed. So it wasn't, it was fine. And then, you know, I called him the day before I left and left him a message. And I was like, the weather's changing. I'm going to be leaving tomorrow morning just to give you an update. So, you know, as long as you respect the officials and like, you know, that stuff, then it's chill. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. It's going right into the haul out fund. <clears throat> Mike asked, how much water do you carry in be of a water maker? Um, I carried, I think I had about 50 gallons or more on that passage. My main huge integrated water tank that I built on the boat is 35 gallons. And I never, I didn't even get down to past a quarter on my passage. Um, I wish I had a water maker. I just can't afford it. Um, it says, what's the worst thing that can happen while sailing out of sea? Falling off the boat by yourself and watching it sail away. In my mind, it's the worst possible case. Worst thing. <clears throat> So is, is there one place that is on your bucket list that you're going to make sure you visit? Um, the canals of Chile and then Cape Horn. But I really want to spend time in the canals of Chile. Um, that's kind of like there and, and the Aleutians for sure. Someone's asking you something. I see. <laughs> I see. You can get away if you want. Um, I hear you. <laughs> I've never even seen Waterworld. People always say that. Also, people get like real stoked on themselves for um, saying, but it looks like Tom Hanks. I'm like, okay, relax. Um, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Keep on trucking for pizza. <laughs> what else I hope you get to feeling better born free um, you need a scuba tank to dive and check your anchor at most anchorages um, I'm like just learning how to free dive. <clears throat> so I'm not very good at it yet, but being in Hawaii gives me a lot of opportunities to practice free diving. So I want to get really good so that I can dive in 30 or 40 feet. No problem. That's my goal. Um, Brian gave me an old set of long fins, free diving fins, and that's made a big difference. And um, it's a lot easier learning and practicing free diving in Hawaii because the water is so much warmer than here in Southern California. What do I miss the most at sea? Probably coffee. Um, I don't drink coffee when I'm at sea. And uh, it was very nice to have coffee when I finally got back. Have I ever had any close calls being hit by bigger boats while sailing? Yeah, on the passage, I, that there was a big tanker that came within a mile of me. That also happened to us on a delivery in when we were sailing to Bermuda. We didn't have use of our engine. We were just under sailing. We we're on a on a 42 foot Dufour. And um, this boat came so close. It came within a thousand feet of us. 
um, we had to come about. And the, the captain had been hailing him on the radio and everything. Lucky it was in the daytime. And the crew went out and was like waving at us. But they almost ran us down. They came so close to us. How do you pay for your expenses and is your sailing full-time? My sailing is full-time and YouTube pays all of my bills at the moment. Um, yeah, the, the reason I don't drink coffee when I'm at sea, when I'm doing a passage, is because I need to be able to go to sleep and take a nap 24 hours a day. So I just don't have any caffeine. I'll drink like hot tea just for fun, but um, I don't, I don't have any caffeine so that anytime I can lay down, I lay down. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's why I don't. <clears throat> yeah. Coast Guard, Ed's mentioned the Coast Guard and his donation there. I love the Coast Guard. N nothing but respect for those dudes. They do a really hard job. What first aid? Do I, I have a very extensive first aid kit with a lot of crazy stuff because um, my former in-laws were both surgeons and set me up a pretty insane first aid kit. Um, thank you, Mitch. Appreciate it. <clears throat> what else? What else? I do avoid boats by sleeping. Um, well, if you have AIS, that helps a lot because you can kind of see where they are and you set alarms so that they go off. You could set, you know, however big your range is. Um, that's the that's the best way to avoid them. But primarily, you just wake up every hour and like look out. And again, this is only when you're well offshore. Uh, somebody asked any favorite books. I have a whole list of my favorite books. Um, on my link tree, Colby Thorpe, will you post the link to the, my favorite books on the chat? I'll my little brother post the link to all my favorite books. Someone says, what safeguard do you, do you have topside to prevent from going overboard? Anytime I'm sailing solo, um, I have a harness on. If I go forward, if we're moving at all, um, unless if you're, if we're barely moving, then I don't clip in. But if we're actually sailing and moving forward, I always clip in with a harness. Um, I've said this in the past, solo sailors don't wear PFDs on offshore passages because if you fall overboard and you're not clipped in, all it does is prolong your death. So I don't wear PFDs when I'm out on an ocean passage. But when I'm close to shore, if the, I know my limits, I know what I'm capable of and what I'm comfortable with. So if I'm moving around the boat um, and I feel the sea is like unreliable, then I wear a PFD and I always clip in when I go forward. Um, Uh, yes, I am for sure planning on visiting uh, Indonesia, for sure. Someone's asking if I prefer an older boat. <clears throat> um, I think that's a question. I mean, I prefer older boats. I would never own a boat pre-1972. Um, I mean, like 1970s, post-1972, I would only own boats older than from 1972 because I don't like cord boats for myself. Um, but a lot of that has to do with what I know my finances are going to be in the long term. Um, I also like full keel boats. So those are mostly older boats. Um, so, you know, it just depends. I mean, there's a lot of people doing really great sailing on every kind of boat you can imagine. So it, it's like person to person as far as what kind of boat people need. <clears throat> Biggest boat I've ever seen out there. Um, I do not. I know how to surf, but I'm not a fan of surfing. The biggest waves I've ever been in are like 20 foot, 20 foot waves. I've been in 20 foot waves off the coast of Oregon, and I've been in 20 foot waves off the coast of Bermuda. Thank you, G Man. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. 
No, I've never been smashed by a rogue wave, thankfully. Um, what else? Talking about surfing, you guys have have you guys seen this new HBO series, The Hundred Foot Wave, um, about Nazare in Portugal? The end of it's kind of like meh, but it's it's a rad series to watch. It's like holy crap. That place is crazy. I love cave. Cave doors are awesome. <clears throat> um, what's my favorite thing to do besides sailing? Scuba diving. 1,000%. <laughs> Scuba diving is what I do for fun. Sailing is what I do for a religion. <clears throat> uh, cool blanket. It's Sarah's blanket. Say hi, Sarah. <laughs> Hello. I'm at Sarah's house in Los Angeles. That's her blanket. I don't know where she got it. Will you show them that old shirt? Oh, yeah. Where is it? It's over there, I think. Um, My dad's. Yeah. Sarah found, she was cleaning out her, her father passed several, many years ago. And um, she um, was cleaning out a bunch of their stuff. In storage, and she found this amazing vintage shirt. How cool is that? <laughs> Very old Catalina Island shirt. So cool. Um, someone asked if I worked as a carpenter in the past. Um, I've worked as a fabricator. That's what I did before I left LA. Um, I can make kind of almost anything. <clears throat> I, I, I don't know. I know how to weld terribly, but I'm not good at welding. But as far as like, um, I can, I can make a lot of different stuff. <clears throat> um, how is, how hard is it to get down glassing stuff? Um, it's not hard. It's just expensive mistakes. And the itching of everything is terrible. Thank you, Russ. Really appreciate it. It's awesome. Um, um, is there a challenge of high winds navigation ADAC? Yeah, there's gnarly, gnarly high winds in the Aleutians, man. It's like even like just the the downslopes or like the cat the um the Willowas. They are like 60, 70 knots in anchorages. That's why I had I set up such a robust ground tackle was for the Aleutians, which I, I'm not going to get to go to right now. Um. How close have you sailed to a whale and what species? <clears throat> I've had mm, a, a, many whales surface right next to my boat. Um, we had a whale. We had an orca surface so close to our boat. It was like an old English yachtsman on watch. It was like, I don't know, 530 in the morning or something. We were just off Point Conception doing a yacht delivery. And he had just woke me up for my watch. I was like in my underwear. He starts yelling, there's something up here. I ran on deck and uh, it's jet black dorsal fin had surfaced feet from the uh, the cockpit. And he thought it was a periscope for a submarine. He thought it was a submarine was coming up under us. Um, and then the orcas, two adults and three babies stayed with us for like an hour off point conception. That was in 2015. Who, who did my Dodger? I made my Dodger. Um. We be able to do scuba diving in Hawaii, Kurt. Uh, yeah, I just dropped my tanks off um, to get them vised while I'm in LA. And um, Kimberly Wood, who's on the chat right now, she's certified and has her own VCs and everything. So now I have someone to go diving with in Hawaii. That was kind of what was holding me back was not knowing anyone I could go diving with there. So um, yeah, we're definitely going to do some dives in Hawaii. I'm super stoked. <clears throat> No, Tritea is in the water. She loves being in the water. Um, I'm hauling out in the next month or so to deal with the rudder. I've only done day sails with you. Yeah. Sarah gets seasick. And uh, <laughs> she got seasick at anchor. Even. So do you. I get seasick too. <laughs> but she, she did a passage with me from Redondo to Marina Del Rey. Before. <clears throat> um. I would say 50, 
I'm at a 50% seasick. Yeah. <laughs> um, says, have you ever encountered pirates? No, I haven't. Um, what else? Uh, Rudda Brudda, that's good. I'm going to work on that one for sure. <clears throat> um, holy moly, Tom, thanks so much. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm terrified of how much it's going to cost to haul out in Hawaii. It's so much cheaper here. It's not cheap here, but it's everything in Hawaii is so crazy expensive. Um, Mike asked if I'm in Wilmington in LA. No, I'm in Silver Lake. Um, what else? Have you had to go up the mast at sea? Oh my gosh, yeah, and it's terrible. <laughs> it is very terrible. Not um, alone, though. No, not alone. Okay. There's, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't do it alone. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've had to go up and like adjust halyards at sea and the movement up top is I'm always the smallest person on board when I'm like crewing. So I'm always the person that ends up at the top of the mast. How heavy are my ballasts? Um, I have an integrated keel. I think my boat displaces 9,000 pounds. What else? How long did you work on your passage? How long did I edit my Hawaii passage? <clears throat> I edited that like every day. So I would film for three or four days and then I transferred the footage every day to back it up. But then I would edit like each day into blocks. And um, every, I don't know, if you don't know how to edit, it might be confusing, but I had like sequences that I edited every single day. So then when it came time to make the final passage video, then I could drag down the sequences and trim them up to keep it as short as possible. Um, I'm amazed at how many people have watched it, even though it's over an hour long, but it was really hard to fit everything in it, even at that length. Um, but that's why I went ahead and made the outtakes video. Um, what will happen? Um, a problem occurred. <laughs> well, the repaired rudder affected performance on Tritea. Not really. She's she's not a race boat, so it's it's very minimal what it's going to do, and it's not a. I'm not concerned about it at all. Thank you, G-Man. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, yeah. I've read lots of Joseph Conrad. Big fan. Conrad. <clears throat> what else? Thoughts on, on my boat's a production boat. I think production boats, some are good and some suck. Um, just depends on the boat, boat to boat. Um, thank you, Aaron. Yeah, it's a very long video. I I tried to get it under an hour and I just couldn't figure out how to do it. But thankfully, it seems like people were. There have been a lot of people that said they watched it all the way through. So thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. I like that emoji too. Look at that guy. Um, um, being baby Brooklyn, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that comment. I appreciate that. This is are all my tats black only. No, I have a color jellyfish tattoo and like a, a, um, a couple little bitty pieces of color, but I'm mostly in black and gray. Is how much time did you lose by using the thing that replaced your rudder steering? Um, I thought the passage was going to take me 22 to 25 days, and it took me 32 days, so a significant amount of time. Um, I got halfway to Hawaii, 
in 14 days and then took me 18 days for the part that was supposed to be the quick part because once you get into the trade winds it speeds up because you're you know following seas and the winds behind you so i should have like really been able to speed up from that point but um with the emergency brake on you don't really get to uh i've been getting i've been getting tattoos since i was like 15 so they've been around for a minute um Yeah, um, that seven guy that Sam like met, and no, I don't, I don't know that cat. Um, and I actually wasn't was unaware of what his adventures until Sam like pointed him out. <clears throat> um, do I think mermaids are real? Um, I sure hope not. I've been seduced by some pretty evil women, so I'm hoping that <laughs> there's none out at sea waiting for me. <clears throat> um, would I ever build my own boat? If not, you consider your dream boat. I have my dream boat. It's an Albert 30. Um, I would I would be interested in someday building like a small wooden sailboat, um, like a small sailing like boat, like under 20 feet. Like when I get old, I could be into that. Um. Mattel is asking what my favorite mythological creature is. Uh, a narwhal. <laughs> Cheating, she says. Um, I don't know. Uh, unicorns are pretty cool. I, I saw a funny meme recently that was saying how in the world are unicorns not real but giraffes are real and i i can kind of <laughs> get on board with that <clears throat> i was wondering because someone said they were going to go watch the passage video like how many people have watched it more than once oh someone said that I, i'm asking oh, yeah. i mean they said they were yeah. going to you know go watch it now yeah but i think you can miss stuff the first time Um, G man's asking if I try to catch another fish. No, cause I had limited lures and since the boat was already disabled and I was like already kind of in crisis mode, I was like, eh, I'm not going to throw away all my lures being stupid on camera, uh, because I don't know what I'm doing. I'd rather save it. And then if I needed it for actually food later on, if something worse happened, that was the reason I didn't try to catch more and I didn't need the food. Um, someone's asking what my favorite sailing books are my little brother posted a link to that my my sailing book list um up in the chat if you scroll back to find it <clears throat> someone asked if you were going to take up harmonica and play uh Diddies. Oh, uh, <laughs> but you do sing. <laughs> yeah, I sing, but not on, on not on camera. No. Um. <laughs> uh. I yeah. I I would be down to learn accordion, like a small accordion, to do like sea shanties and stuff. But um, I made music for many many years and uh, have a lot of like records and stuff out. Like that's what I did for a long time. So um. I wouldn't wouldn't be opposed to it, but the boat has so much to do all the time anyway. I don't really have between like the channel and like I'm writing books and I don't have a lot of free time for learning things that isn't like involved in adventure life. Um, 
camera equipment and software you prefer? Uh, the camera equipment, I filmed everything on the passage. Thank you so much, Houdini13. Um, I filmed everything on the passage uh, with a GoPro Hero 9. Um, that camera is fantastic. I would imagine the Hero 10 is is maybe even better. But that Hero 9 is fantastic. It That built-in gimbal is what really made the passage video so impactful because you could see what the motion of the ship was really like. Um, so I'm very grateful that, that I have that camera on board. Um, and I edit everything on Adobe Premiere. Um, someone asked again if I'm full-time YouTube or have other sources of income. I'm full-time YouTube, fully funded. Uh, do you ever allow yourself full night's sleep while sailing? Absolutely not. Sleep in one hour intervals if you're lucky. <clears throat> what percentage of sailors do I think have died losing a rudder 1,000 miles out? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I hopefully, just, like, hopefully they just like got rescued, yeah. but I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't been able to find any accounts of anyone sailing that far solo with a drogue. I haven't found any accounts of people sailing a thousand miles with a drogue with crew. And I sure haven't found any accounts. And I'm not saying that it hasn't happened. Um, I just haven't. And I know a lot of old salts um, that I've asked about it. And so if anyone knows of any stories that it can be verified, um, I'd be interested in hearing them. Is there a country or cruising ground you're most interested in seeing? Um, anything beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm stoked about the South Pacific and I'm really excited about New Zealand, um, and Australia, um, at the moment, because that's probably what's the, the closest things that's on my horizon, you know, super stoked. I'm really, really excited about visiting atolls that are just in the middle of nowhere. They're uninhabited. That's like kind of my main interest at the moment. Um, I think the early 70s Catalina boats are rad. They're pretty good. Um, they were listed, those Catalina 27s were even listed in the 20 boat, small boats to take you anywhere. Um, so, and there are a lot of them made and um, they can be fixed on the cheap. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a, a very good small size boat for someone working on a, on a tight budget. This was a real concern. He's, they're asking if, if you had to leave your boat out there, you'd have to sink it. And that was the big fear, right? Yep, that was the thing. Maybe that's when you were scared. <laughs> no, that was I'm motivated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, not scared so much about that, but motivated to be like, okay, well, I got to figure this out. Yeah, you have to sink the boat if you're rescued by a tanker or something so that it doesn't get in the way of other people's navigation. Um, there, the spare tire rudder fix, um, not really, definitely not the rudder under the boat because there's no, my rudder is attached to the keel. So it's like, yeah, there's no, there, you can have an auxiliary rudder wind vane, which is what I had. Um, and that also had issues, but even an auxiliary rudder wind vane, even a hydro vane won't necessarily steer the boat it, like a full kill boat anyway. Um, I don't believe that it could steer the boat with the same capacity as your stock rudder. Um, so I definitely think you would have to be short sailed with an emergency rudder, no matter what. So you would be slowed down. Um, but thank you, Adam. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Um, Do you want to quick we, recap your plans? Because so many people are on that weren't on before. Um, yeah, uh, just, yeah, a quick recap. Um, I am sailing to the South Pacific next. I'm re Maytel just texted me for some reason. Maybe I didn't see her message and she's being impatient or didn't see my, her chat. Okay. Okay. So Maytel, post this question. She said, she just called me an idiot in the text message. Um, 
Metal, post the question you just asked me in the chat right now, and I'll respond to it. Um, so Metal just asked me, um, here, I'll just read it. <laughs> Metal asked me, if you could go at, go at it again, rudder failure included, what would you change or bring? Which is an awesome question. And um, yeah, I would do it again. Um, I would bring ratchet straps. Um, Cause once it got, there was definitely days where I was like really becalmed and I could have actually dove on it and got a ratchet strap under it. Um, there was just no way to do it at the time. And um, so ratchet straps, I think would have been the biggest thing. Cause that would have changed everything and made life so much easier. Um, but yeah, if I had to do it again, <clears throat> Even with the rudder failure, yeah, I know I could do it. So yeah, I'm like, sure, I'll do it again. You do want to go to Galapagos and Alaska, right? Uh, yeah, we're just saying Galapagos. Just, right? uh, oh just yeah, question mark. yeah, at some point Galapagos, but it's a little tricky now. They make you kind of just leave your boat and like, you just have to go on tours. It's not really like it used to be. I'm not really into the whole doing group tours things on a remote island. So it's not, I'd rather go see actual remote places without people. Um, I said, uh, I watched, uh, oh, thank you so much for the uh, $10 donation. Really appreciate it. Um, I watched how the rough water uh, you were in explain how difficult it was to avoid getting hurt while fixing the rudder it was incredibly difficult um the big the big 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 problem which i say in the video is the fact that the boat was still traveling forward it was still sailing at like a knot and a half with all the sails down so i was being pulled taut on my tether anytime i let go of the boat i was being drugged behind the boat and like none of this is on film i didn't have a gopro in the water or anything um, one thing that I will definitely have on board for the future from now on is like a padded helmet for like boxing so that I could put that on when I get in. Cause my biggest concern was that boat rolling and knocking me out. And then I'm dead. That was the big concern. And then the second day, the big concern was when I was holding onto the side, trying to put my scuba gear on my, my arms pinged out. I knew I was like fucked. So um, I got out of the gear as quickly as possible, got back on board with what strength I had and got it back on board. So those were the biggest concerns, but <clears throat> mainly it was just the fact that I was in 20 knots of wind and like, I think the seas were averaging seven to eight foot at that point with some 12 foot, which is about what it goes when you have 20 plus knots of wind. <clears throat> Someone asked, what prevents sailboats from tipping over? Um, uh, the keel, there's like, it's like lead keel on the bottom of sailboats is what makes them not flip over. Um, it's almost like a sippy cup for a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and even if they do capsize, the next wave will almost always right them because that weight wants the gravity keeps you, keeps you pointing in the right way. <clears throat> Someone said, can you do this kind of cruising with a fin keel boat? Absolutely. I think Dallas's boat is fin keel. There's lots of fin keel boats that do crazy stuff. Um, that one dude, one of my other favorite YouTube channels is that alluring Arctic guy, Arctic or whatever, that crazy fin that, that's sailing all over in high latitudes. And he was on like a Beneteau doing crazy stuff. Now he has like a super bulldog boat. But before he was just doing it on like a kind of a stock Beneteau. Um, so, yeah, you can do a lot with all different types of boats. Just depends on how how much you want to fit it out and how kind of crazy you are. <clears throat> what motivates me to push on? I just want to see beautiful things. That's it. It's like, I want to see wildlife and gorgeous places and see it all. I just want to smile. That's it. Thank you, Joss. It's awesome. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> so
What else? You've been on here so long, my poor brother Scott's probably dying. <laughs> He's on the East Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Scott's in Florida. My little brother Scott's Florida man. Um, yeah. What time's at your house, Scott? Probably 11. Read it up over there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, yes, I have radar on my boat, and radar is crucial piece of gear. I love radar. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll come to the United Kingdom eventually for sure. Um, someone asked how my journey back was. I didn't sail back. I'm sailing on to the South Pacific. My boat's in Hawaii. I'm just visiting Los Angeles. Scott said he has to work at 730 in the morning. <laughs> That's true love of a brother. Oh my goodness. Goodness. You're very <laughs> early in Ireland. Um, yeah, I guess I'll close it out. Um, thanks for everybody for for tuning in, hanging out. Pobs, New Mexico. Weston, do you know me? <laughs> We're from Hobbs, New Mexico. Um <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Do you know me? It's such a small place. I know. Did he see the sun article? <laughs> um, <laughs> see, Scott's coming too. <laughs> uh, yes, I'll be coming to Cape Town for sure, probably in like two and a half years. Um. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to sign out and uh, eat more pizza. Thanks, Sarah, <laughs> for supplying the pizza. And uh, I'm at her house. I've just been editing all day while she works. And, um, yeah, stoked to see everybody on here. And um, appreciate Scott and Colby for policing all the silliness when people act, act a fool. Thanks, <laughs> Kate, for chiming in. We'll see you soon, Kate. And, uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. And I'm out.